Hello and welcome to Miniature Realms. My name is Stuart and welcome to my Bolt Action British 8th Army project vlog number seven. Um, and those of you that have been following along um, all the editions, so to speak, of the project vlog will know that I generally like to um, build a table or just a, or even a collection of scenery to go together with um, a, a new project that I'm doing. It won't always need, need to be the case, but I didn't have any any desert stuff already. So if you haven't watched the other videos, do do look back and you'll see that I've started to, to build up some terrain, but there's lots of gaps on the table. Um, so I, I dug around in the loft um, and looked through my old sort of mixed terrain boxes and I had a look to see what I could find that I might be able to make use of. Um, and primarily I was looking for this foreground building here, which I think in an earlier video I mentioned that I wasn't going to use because it looked a little bit too clean and shiny compared to the, the paint job that I, I've done on the Renedra um, buildings. But as you can see, I was right. You can see I'll pop a little picture up there and you can see that it stands out like a sore thumb at the back of the table as it stands at the moment, but I still really, really like it. And I thought that maybe I could um, airbrush some inks and things and weather it slightly and, and see if I can bring it in to match the table a little bit more. Um, it's the only one I've got. So I mean, I could go and buy a few more and have a slightly different themed table. That's one option. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd give it a go and see if I can uh, sort of bring it in and match it a little bit more. And I'm going to be ordering the the LL Main train station from Sarissa Precision anyway. Um, so that's something else that's going to look slightly different. So I'll try to bring them all in by using the same weathering techniques and the same inks I brushed in and we'll see how we go. But I'll move that to one side for now. And that leads us with these other bits, monstrosities. Um, many, many years ago, we're talking more than more than 10 years ago, I um, made a little bit of terrain and resin cast it and I used to sell the odd bit as well. And these are some of the pretty poor specimens really. Um, I painted up a long time ago. So these are quite heavy resin, um, but these are even worse. I mean, very, very unrealistic, but they, they do a job in a certain sense. So I'm wondering if I can do some kind of rescue on them um, and what this video is going to do really, hopefully, and I'll be coming back at the end of the video showing you how I've rescued them and, and, and what I've done. Um, I have a little bit of an idea of adding some extra rocks maybe in these and adding some dry shrub um, adding again some of the same weathering powders and, and, and things that I've used on the other terrain to bring it all in and, and, and see how it looks. Um, particularly filling in some of these gapped area here. I don't, just don't think it looks very good or realistic. These are clearly calmed out of blue foam ages ago and then cast in a mold and, and, and then cast in resin, sorry. So, and this brings me on to these last bits. Um, I think this was the piece that I kind of reproduced and 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 and, and, and potentially sold little bits of, and I did sell quite a few actually. Um, and these were offcuts that um, I I ended up cutting down to to make look slightly better. I think it's from memory; it's a long time ago. The gauge is slightly wider than the the train set that I'm using on the table, but. It's close enough, and again, the plan is to bring in lots of the weathering powders and, and the things that I've used on the rest of the table, and some shrub and bits, uh, and just have it as a bit of a kind of impassable terrain with maybe some soft cover. So that's the plan anyway. A couple of years ago, I was given lots and lots of terrain and modelling bits by my good friend Carl, who lives local to me, but I've still never managed to play him in a game in anything. I think we always end up playing different systems at the at the wrong times, but they kind of they never quite overlap. But uh, Carl, I met through the Horus Heresy scene a few years ago, and he used to attend the events. My, my friend Tom and I used to run, and he. Um, yeah, absolutely incredibly talented painter. Um, he used to do lots of Twitch sessions and things. I'm not sure if he still does any more. I think the pandemic may have paid in the end to that sort of thing. But he, I know he still posts things on his Facebook and on his Instagram. So have a look for a Lost Exodite miniature art. And um, really, 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 really talented guy. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. He gave me lots of stuff, including a big box of... Um, uh, flock that I've been using. He gave my friend Dan a, a miniatures t a terrain table, which we got shipped off. Loads and loads of really cool stuff. And in it was loads and loads of trees, which I've turned into stuff from Middle Earth. And all that's left of that now is this bag of kind of very messy, so I'm going to try and keep it in the bag. Um, very dry kind of brush tree stuff. My, my plan though is, is I'm going to try and use this. Um, 
shoved in between the relative gaps um, on, on these bits of terrain, just small chunks of it. Um, and I think that might help fill in the gaps a little bit, make it look a bit more realistic and small amounts maybe on the railway stuff. So that's the plan anyway, in addition to the, 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 the kind of the, the matching in with the weathering powders and stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go away and do that. I'll catch you on the other side. Well, here we are adding some bits to it. So if you've um, watched my video on turning cheap plastic trees into um, usable terrain, um, you'll have seen some of these techniques. And this isn't a full tutorial, but basically I'm using Vallejo Earth Texture. And this is the desert sand. And after that, same thing again. This is the layer of ground texture. So slightly different in terms of its sort of thickness. Um, and this is grey sand. And then adding a bit of a dark wash. And this will give it its deep shadow. It will look a little bit dark. But um, again, if you've seen that previous video, you'll realise it works. And this is a, an oil wash made by um, Scale 75 called Dark Mud. Now another oil wash by scale 75, this is mid-ground and it starts to lighten it slightly. Now I go on to use some dark sand, which is the lightest mix of that. And then it dries, it does take a little while to dry, but when it dries it gives a nice dusty effect. Once fully dry, I'm dusting on pigment powders directly, rubbing them right into the grain and then blowing off the excess. Be surprised how well it stays on. I'm using three colours over three layers. So the first layer is um, Vallejo um, Light Senna. Second layer is um, Vallejo Dark Yellow Ochre. And then the third layer in patches is Vallejo Green Earth, which is almost a a white colour, a whitey, very, 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 very light, pale, cold sort of green tinge to it, but it was very, very white as you can see. Now I am gluing in with super glue some of that dry shrub that I showed earlier on in the video, filling in the gaps in those um, funny kind of blocks that I'd made all those years back. And the same railway tracks, just covering up some of the bits that don't look quite so period um, <laughs> accurate, shall we say. And then whacking on a few tufts as well. I um, can't remember the, um, the name or brand of this off the top of my head. I think they're all painted tufts. Um, so as you can see, any kind of new dried, arid looking grass would, would work. And it's just a nice offset of the green that's, that's there for the, the dry shrubland. And works very well against the geek film map, which you'll see a little bit later when you see the finished table. As you can see, I think they've come out quite well. It's quite a, a good job at turning what was some pretty sort of aging, shoddy looking terrain into something that will match quite nicely with the other terrain I've already built for the mat and match the mat itself. And it's, it's just really useful scattered terrain and because I already had it in the loft, it sort of given it a second use rather than throwing it away and it took no time at all. These bits aren't slightly better than those those strange bits with the um, the, the brush put in, but um, they work as well. It's a good line of sight um, blocker there, but not so large that you, you can't get troops and tanks and things around it. 
I am using natural undulations in the the Geek Villain mat and I've got t-shirts and things pushed under it so there's a lot of natural sloped hills and things. Now on to making that um, foreground building which is really nice by itself, I love foreground things but they are very clean and cartoonish as I, as I mentioned earlier so now to try and make it look a little bit more grim and, and dark and match the other buildings I already have. So I'm airbrushing here some Citigal contrast paint and I believe it's Wildwood from memory. This gives you a uh, not quite as dark or as um, sort of purpley brown as the Seigel brown that you can get so this is very good for tree bark and stuff probably why it's called Wildwood um, and it's just a really nice mid brown. Now I'm stippling on some more Vallejo texture this is thick mud European mud but I'm putting such a small amount on it doesn't look like wet mud it dries it looks like kind of dried splattered um, mud at the bottom of a building where there's been traffic um, whether that's foot traffic or, or, or um, tanks or jeeps and things. And now I'm using some more of the Scale 75 oil washes. I am thinning them with clean white spirit afterwards. Didn't work perfectly, so I went back in with more of the same Vallejo pigments that I've used on the other pieces. I'm brushing them in dry again. If you really rub them in quite firmly, you'd be surprised how much stays on. I'm doing the same, especially around the lower parts of the building, over the now dry um, European thick mud. And it just gives you a really, really dry, kind of dusty, dirty looking building. I think it looks great. I think it's toned it down loads compared to what it was before. And you may have watched another video that I, I posted just before this one has come out a few days beforehand and this is the Sarissa Precision LLA main station. Um, I do a full review in that video and show it painted so but those of you who haven't seen that video um, it's all painted and done. I know I mentioned earlier in the video I was going to purchase it I, I actually had done by the time um, I, I got around to recording the rest of this video it's been done over a few days so a removable roof and everything painted in the same way airbrushed um, with um, some scale 75 colors the same way used for the army itself and again it fits in quite well with all the other things and here we are with some video of the finished table um, so the camera angle probably doesn't pick up the undulations with the things that are placed underneath the the geek for the mat and excuse the, the color changes um, it really messes with the the white balance a little bit depending on where you're positioned it's definitely a little bit yellower than it seems in certain parts of the shots um, but you get a bit of an idea about the way it's all laid out on the table with my uh, shoddy camera work um, it may need a few more bits um, I'm gonna leave it as it is for now there is a little bit more height than it maybe looks like in the table from as I said from this angle so there are very few things to um, block line of sight. So the train does itself, the railway station does, um, the three buildings obviously do there, the one the other side does, so do all the, um, the little scattered terrain and rock formations and things. Um, but obviously, sort of filming it from this sort of height, it looks like it's fairly flat. Saying all that, it's not a, a sort of city fight table, um, it's not even a European uh, um, sort of countryside table with lots of bocage and, and trees and things like that it, it is the desert um, there are lots of open barren lands and things I may get a few more rocks and things like that but as I said when you when you're kind of at eye level more there there are plenty of things to block a lot of sight but yeah please do comment and have some ideas if people think it should be laid out in a slightly different way you know I've laid it out in a certain way God knows if that will be the way I lay it out when I actually get to play a game on it I can, I can do all kinds of different configurations but it, it looked good for a setup I popped a few of the models on there that I have finished the rest of the army actually is um, is, is, is coming along quite nicely everything bar a Matilda 2 tank which is still in a box that I'm going to do a, an unboxing and um, build and, and full paint tutorial on the rest of it all has paint on it I had all the airbrush layers um, are well into the kind of the, the the next layers now if you've if you've watched my painting tutorials on how I do it so still a little bit of work to go but um, I'm pretty sure it'll be you'll be done in the next month or six weeks or so and then I'll move on to my next bolt action project now a few stills rather than my awful camera work um, you can again see the, the probably the true color a little bit more um, I was filming the the shots around the table with my um, iPhone in a video mode rather than my normal camera just because I have a gimbal for it so it makes it slightly less shaky but the pictures here 
to give a much more true reflection of the, the real colour that you see in daylight and the, the colour of the, the Geek Villa mat. And loads of fun doing these shots. I quite like setting up um, sort of scenic vistas and things. I've moved my, my back scenes around a little bit, which you may be able to spot for some of these pictures. Maybe a little bit too green in the hills, but I'm trying to uh, trying to hide the, the grassy bits of those and maybe capture the sky more. It's all good fun anyway. Can't wait to get some games on it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. Um, as you can see, the project's coming along quite well. Um, if you'd like to continue to see what's going on in terms of the project, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, check out the other Bolt Action videos I've got on there as well. And there are lots of other um, historical periods and game systems that I cover as well. So thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. And I'll catch you all soon.